Hello, I'm Keith Richard, Master Casting Instructor with Flyfishers International. I'm here today with A Hero USA to present a video on line tapers. Knowing what different line tapers are out there and available for you will help you determine the best fly line for your casting situation. If you're casting a big bass bug along the bank and you need to turn over that fly line with a heavy lure on the end of your line, you need a different taper than if you're out in the Midwest throwing a size 22 midge and you want it to land on the water like a mosquito without a ripple, the line taper needs to be different. So after this video, I hope that you'll understand what line tapers are all about. If we look at this chart, we see there are basically three different line tapers. The level line line taper, if this is a fly line, it doesn't vary at all from start to finish. It's the same diameter all the way from start to finish. These lines are typically up to 80 feet long. They're used for beginners to learn how to fly fish, to learn some casting skills. They're also good for bass fishing, for turning over big, big plugs. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. They run about $20. And, um, so in comparison to the other tapers, they're, they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, <clears throat> once you wear out the first 40 feet or so, you can turn it around and wear out the other 40 feet. Just, you're typically fishing with no more than 40 or 50 feet of line at any given time anyhow. Uh, then there is the double taper fly line, which has, you'll notice, a short section where a very, very thin uh, fly line that is where you tie your, uh, your leader to. It can be anywhere from 6 inches to 18 inches long. And that, they, they do that to accommodate uh, if you're cutting your line quite a bit, you can cut back several times, tie different leaders on, and not get into the tapered portion of the fly line, which will affect its performance. You'll notice the double taper look, is a mirror image. If you look at it at the middle, you have the same at the right side as you do on the left side. So again, when you're in the, under fishing conditions, when you are wear this part of the fly line out, simply take this part off of the backing, flip the line around, tie this part to the backing, and you have a brand new section of fly line. So you basically have two fly lines in one. That's your double tapered fly line. Some of the more specialty fly lines uh, or what we call weight forward fly lines. Fly lines are very in design dependent on the lure that you want to cast. Now the manufacturers will make your job easier for you because many of them put a picture of the fly, of the fish rather, that you're fishing for on the box. So they, they help you in that regard. But to help you understand what tapers are all about, if this is a typical fly line say anywhere from 80 to 110 feet. You'll have that little tip section where you'll tie your uh, leader to, and you'll notice here it's tapered. And then it's level for a, a, a ways, and then it's tapered again. So this is the front taper, this is the belly of the line, this is the rear taper, and if you add those three components together, and you stop right here, this is considered the head of the fly line. And this, the rest of this, is just the running line. This head will vary in length depending on what fishing conditions the, the manufacturer makes designs them for. You'll find that they vary anywhere from 25 to 50, uh, 55 feet in length as far as the length of the head. The advantages to that we'll get into in a minute you'll notice on this weight forward line that it has more of a bulbous type head uh, front taper than this one. This one's pretty straight. This one kind of, it, it's not rounded, but it maintains its angle uh, greater. So what's going to happen is as you make your cast and that line turns over, the energy is transferred down that fly line. It's going to retain more energy all the way to the butt section of the leader. This one because of the way it's tapered, it will dissipate its energy a little bit quicker than this one. So this fly line will retain its energy uh, all the way to the butt section. You 
the benefit of this is that when you're turning over big fly lines versus uh, big uh, bu bass bugs versus smaller midges or smaller uh, flies, you'll notice on this way forward line, it has a very long front taper, a shorter belly, and it can have any length of rear taper, again, just like these can, any length of rear taper. This would be very good for dissipating a lot of energy all the way through to help land smaller flies without a splash on the water. Very delicate presentation. Uh, the longer the rear taper on these fly lines, if say if that rear taper goes out all the way to say 50 feet, well then you can do what we call mending on the water. Uh, if the rear taper stops at say, let's say this is only 25 feet, and you make a cast to uh, 35, 40 feet, you're not going to be able to mend this line on the water. So the longer the head, the longer the line on the water that you can mend with. So if you're out west and you're mending on big rivers, you want a fly line that's got an extremely long head. For example, the uh, ballistic pro performance lines, uh, Rio long cast, uh, scientific anglers has a, a ex extreme distance line. Um, those are good for that. So now you see that there's different tapers in the front part of the uh, heads of these lines. The ones with long narrow tapers are good for delicate fly presentations. The one which come very quickly to the uh, butt section, in the front of the fly line, retain its energy more for turning over big plugs. I hope this helps you in deciding which fly line is best for your fishing conditions. Again, I'm Keith Richard along with A Hero USA. Thank you for watching. Tight, wishing you tight lines and tighter loops.